Hello, family. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back on the show. Thank you. <laughs> this reminds me of Sheldon and them's fun with flags. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's some things in life. <laughs> you know, um, Jared and I have spoken about the business process of losing everything and closing a multi million rand business and leaving behind it a trail of destruction and all the emotional stuff around that. But Obviously, there's when you get home at night time, you're not a husband, you're not a businessman anymore, you're now a husband, and it's not like you can leave all the feelings and stuff at home and at, at work. But you went through another process adjacent to us, and you watched us go through a process. So, today, I really just want to share the heart of a wife who's standing next to a visionary for whom it's not going well. For whom things change, for whom focus changes. And I just want to start by commending you for being my rock in times when I really didn't know how to put one foot in front of the other foot. And that was the power of these times. Do you want to say anything? Where do you want to start? Okay, so just, just if I think back, before the business took off and it went so well, we had been through a couple of times in our life where we had lost yes. everything. Where the sheriff of the court had pitched up and taken everything and a, as a woman to see you, yourself lose things repeatedly was incredibly hard. Mm. But I, e each time I grew and I made peace with the process and being married to a visionary man, an entrepreneur, a, a, a businessman, a, a apostolically prophetic man is really hard. <laughs> but it's what God called, called me to do and his vision became my vision. And one of the things the Lord taught me right at the beginning is that even if he makes the wrong decision, and I don't necessarily agree with it. I will voice my opinion, but then I still take his decision as if it's our decision. And we face whatever happens together as our decision. Um, that's the way that's it. we do life. And so the business started growing and um, it was exciting, but I was extremely cautious. And then it grew so well. I remember the day that he came to say they've bought a boat <laughs> and I had a minor speed wobble because I thought, ah, a boat, can we do this? At business wise we could, there was yes. more than enough money and they bought, and you bought me an Evoque and I was so blessed with that and then we moved into a big house in Eagle Canyon with six bathrooms and <laughs> I thought, what am I going to do with this? But we always had people staying with us. So yes. there wasn't ever a time that a bedroom stood empty. Exactly. We, <laughs> it was always used. There was always things happening. Mm. And I, I began to relax and I began to enjoy the, the blessings of finances. And we gave cars away. We, we were blessing people because we were in the position to be able yes. to do it and to build God's kingdom. And then I remember just before, uh, then we sold the Evoque for, as a business investment into one of the companies that we had. And a few months later, they bought me a Range Rover Velar, a red one, cash. And I was so excited about this car. It had everything in it. It's a dream car and it was wonderful. And I had it for a month and then COVID hit it. Yes. Just about a month and COVID hit. Less than a month. Less than a month and COVID hit. And um, at that time as well, I was in a place of recovery from a, a very bad illness that I had had. And that was part of the blessing for me for fighting for recovery. Mm. And then the business took strain and we had to say goodbye to the Velar again <laughs> and then we bought a smaller evoke again and um i enjoyed that so much it, it, it's really can i say it? a kick-ass car <laughs> and <laughs> i enjoyed it 
and I enjoyed being in the position of being able to go shop and not being concerned about finances and making <laughs> ends meet. And we had those days going into Woolies and full trolleys full, hey? Yeah, that seemed, I would order online like it was nobody's business. <laughs> um, so one of the things I must just mention is that in, in January of the year, uh, COVID-2020, 2020, 2020. Uh, we'd been on holiday to Nisna. We'd had a wonderful time, absolutely marvelous holiday, our mm. favorite place to go holiday. And we were traveling back and uh, we stopped at Colesburg and we had a lunch there. And I remember going into the restaurant and feeling awful, like something had happened. And we came back to Johannesburg and I said to Hannes, something is very bad. I had no strength, I had no energy. And so the next day, that, that was the Sunday, we came back the next day, the Monday, uh, Hannes took me to the doctor and while we were in the doctor's waiting room, she walked past and she says, hang on, let me get you to the emergency site quickly there's something very wrong and to cut a long story short they took my oxygen my oxygen was 57 i didn't know i was dying and this was long before covid hit and uh, i was rushed by ambulance to icu and um they said to to Hannes that it was touch and go with my life Really serious. Uh, incredibly serious and I remember I couldn't even really pray I couldn't I just kept crying out to God mm. God save me I don't want to die yet and in ICU I think I cried for the first time properly in my life for two days I couldn't stop crying and in that process God began to deal with me and take me on this journey and um, I knew I had to get out of ICU at that particular hospital mm. I was in so I doctored the oxygen <laughs> before they came to check it. I would turn it up very hard to make sure I had oxygen. And because they kept trying to te treat me for a lung condition, and I felt there was something wrong and I didn't know what. And so I got myself out of hospital by the grace of God. And when I got home, I realized I can't breathe. And I had a monitor and then, um, people within our church at that stage set us up with oxygen levels and oxygen monitors and I, I remember when I got home my oxygen was 59 and uh, you then insisted on a second opinion, opinion and we went to see a pulmonologist and um, he tested everything and he says this is so strange there's actually nothing wrong with your lungs but I think there's a problem with your heart and so he sent me then to a cardiologist who did the full exam. I remember being so afraid and at that stage I, I couldn't walk two steps. It was it was such an effort. I was so weak. I, I had to walk two steps and stop and have assistance and walk another two steps. Anyway, when we were at the cardiologist, he examined me and examined my heart and he said, uh, the fact is that over the years, I have a, a, had a heart condition where the walls of my heart uh, were hard. So a normal person's heart would beat like this. Um, and the faster you move, the faster it would beat. But my heart wouldn't do that. My heart would just, if I tried to move anything, it would just solidify. And it wouldn't actually beat like a normal person's. But anyway... Um, I, with that, I uh, got prayer and the fight began yes. to, to become whole and God was just with me and it, it took six months before I could take a few steps without being tied to oxygen and it was a fight every single day and in the middle of all this COVID hit, they said if I get COVID I would die. I got COVID and I remember praying that night and my oxygen levels went up by 2%. <laughs> um, and it was a fight. It yes. was a, every single day fight. And slowly my oxygen levels went up from 57, 62, 65, 70 and so up. Yes. You know? uh, I remember that moment when the doctor walked past us and stopped mid-stride and said, you must go to the emergency. And then suddenly 
I was just there for a normal doctor's appointment. Suddenly I'm following the ambulance and I still said to the doctor, but I can take you, we don't need to wait for an ambulance. And she said, no, you must go in the ambulance and we get there to ICU and I'm trying to park the car while they're getting you in. And it was like a real movie moment. And oh, that's a crazy time. And there you watched you recover, watch one step after another step. And I remember during COVID how you rode um, uh, uh, <laughs> on the machine, machine. Hooked up to oxygen. <laughs> and how you improved as God healed in the process. A lot of people don't like a process, but God worked with you in such a process. And you've got your wonderful book called Breathe about it. And yeah, but God has been good. God has been good. And in the midst of this, we started losing the business and one of the things that stood out to me so much was the the, the calls that you, you and Jared used to get, the death threats and we would, as wives, we would hear people threatening you with the most horrific death threats and that was, I think, some of the hardest things that as a wife you, you have to face and when you got attacked and beaten and uh, cornered and hijacked and the stuff that went on and happened one thing after another eventually we're just praying for you to be mm. alive um, it was a daily the death threats were daily the ugly stuff that happened um, and every yeah. time you guys said no to bribery and corruption and then more death threats came and at the same time we we're running a ministry and I think we died a million times over. Um, mm. I think that's where you really died yourself. And we came to the place where we had nothing. We lost everything. So to try and put the year 2020 in perspective, obviously the whole world wasn't shut down. The church wasn't shut down. We were fighting for mom to be whole Hello. and to be breathing. And then you'd have uh, outages in electricity and uh, we have to drive around illegally the complex security follows us so that you can be on the cars uh, uh, battery battery uh, for your oxygen yeah, in the middle of the night oxygen. yeah we're riding around to try and just get you on oxygen and everybody is not happy with that <laughs> and business is falling and we're trying our best to try and keep the business together church is closed and we try and get together on a sunday morning online but uh, there was no facilities to go online and the church changed to online so every part was just different and I remember somewhere we had a contract in Port Elizabeth and there was a sign up that was so rusted you couldn't read the sign and one morning I stopped there by the seat to pray and I looked up at this sign and I realized that this sign had value somewhere before but now it's so rusted you can't read what it says and there's just the rusted remains of the sign and that's exactly how I felt is that I knew that I had value somewhere in life before all this happened but it just Satan just told me that you have no value there's nothing and I was like the sign there was something left a skeleton left of who I was wow. and <laughs> that's just one of the low moments but in it every single time God would pick us up God would restore we would get something else and in every area of our life it was just survival it, it was you know and i never thought that this time around we would be we would go through bankruptcy i never thought i would lose everything again in my life <laughs> we've it's happened a couple of times i thought this is it we've arrived i'm safe and i'm secure <laughs> and yet once again oh. we, we, we've lost everything and we are starting a journey again mm. and trusting God daily for provision mm. and at least we've got a roof over our head, hallelujah. Praise God. And God is good. Uh, what I have found in God and what I have learned is worth its weight in gold. And yes. uh, I'm so grateful that even in the difficult days that mm. God reunited us and restored so many broken relationships. There was many times that we had deep regrets for people that got hurt. Yes. Uh, I, I've seen you cry. <laughs> but the hurt for people that went through the loss of business and things like that and income. 
I saw you cried for them. We cried for them. We cried for ourselves and we cried for our children and our dreams and yeah. but God. Absolutely. And God has sustained us. I, I, it took me a time to trust again. I had to learn to trust God again. Um, and one of the things I made decisions that I'm never going to go back and say, but I warned you or I told you or we should have or we could have. That's the past. Amen. It's what are we going to do going forward? Yes. And um, we were all in this together. We made decisions, believing every decision we made was for the best of the business, for the best of God's kingdom. And we made mistakes. We trusted people that was kabangas, <laughs> some of them. But God's good. Yes. And He came through. And for anybody out there that's facing all these different kinds of things hold on to god Absolutely. and i want to say never ever 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 give up on god because god will take your worst situation and he will turn it around 